In 2020, a discovery of immense significance was made deep within the mysterious waters of the Red Sea. This wasn't just any ordinary find, scientists uncovered what are now called death pools, and their foreboding name alone hints at the dangers they conceal. The discovery occurred during a scientific expedition in the Gulf of Aqaba, located between Saudi Arabia and Egypt. The researchers were nearing the end of their dive when they noticed something strange on the seafloor. Strange strands of seaweed seemed to float above the ocean bed, something that immediately drew their attention. To investigate further, they deployed a remotely operated vehicle, ROV, an essential tool for exploring the uncharted depths of the ocean. What they found left them astounded, beneath the sea, there were motionless lakes of water, seemingly still and separate from the surrounding ocean. These were the mysterious brine pools. Brine pools are fascinating yet eerie formations. They are pockets of water within the sea, but they are drastically different from their surroundings. These pools are composed of extremely concentrated salt water, so salty that they can be up to eight times more saline than the ocean water around them. This is no small difference, these pools essentially create isolated environments on the seafloor. They don't mix with the surrounding water due to their density and unique chemical properties. Even more fascinating is that these brine pools are ancient. They were formed millions of years ago, during the Miocene epoch, a time when the Earth was very different, with strange creatures roaming both land and sea. As time passed, deeply buried mineral deposits dissolved into these isolated pockets of water, forming the brine pools we see today. One of the largest pools discovered during the expedition spans a staggering 170,000 square feet, making it a substantial feature on the ocean floor. Smaller pools, though just as intriguing, cover about 107 square feet each. While this discovery might seem like a mere curiosity at first glance, it holds terrifying implications for marine life. These pools are not just salty, they are deadly. Their most dangerous characteristic is that they lack oxygen. Now, one might assume that being underwater means oxygen is irrelevant, but in fact, the Earth's oceans are teeming with oxygen. In fact, more than half of the Earth's oxygen supply is generated by marine plants, such as phytoplankton, seaweed, and algae. These plants use photosynthesis to produce oxygen, much like their land-based counterparts. While marine life consumes some of this oxygen, vast quantities still remain in the water, making the oceans a rich and habitable environment for countless species. But within the brine pools, this essential element is conspicuously absent. Without oxygen, marine creatures cannot breathe, metabolize, or survive. The moment a fish or other sea creature wanders into one of these pools, it suffocates almost immediately. The pools become death traps, their perimeters lined with the lifeless bodies of unfortunate creatures that ventured too close. The brine pools have aptly earned their reputation as deadly because they create a kind of underwater graveyard, where the remains of marine animals rest in eerie stillness. The formation of these brine pools also involves unique scientific phenomena. Have you ever tried to make ice cubes from salty water? It's surprisingly difficult. Salt water has a higher freezing point than fresh water, which makes it harder to freeze. This process, known as freezing point depression, occurs because the salt interferes with the formation of hydrogen bonds between water molecules, making it more challenging for the water to solidify. When seawater begins to freeze in the polar regions, the salt is expelled as the water freezes, forming a dense, super salty liquid known as brine. This brine then sinks to the ocean floor, creating these isolated pools of high salinity water. Interestingly, despite their deadly nature, these brine pools are teeming with life, but not the kind of life most of us would expect. Microbes, some of the oldest and most resilient forms of life on Earth, thrive in the harsh environment of the brine pools. These tiny organisms are capable of surviving in places where most other forms of life would perish. They form thick mats on the edges of the brine pools, creating ecosystems that are entirely unique to these extreme environments. Additionally, some salt-loving creatures, such as shrimp and eels, have been found hovering near the edges of the pools, waiting to catch unsuspecting prey that wanders too close. It's a bizarre, deadly dance of survival in one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth. These pools are more than just deadly traps, they are also incredibly valuable to science. They offer a glimpse into Earth's distant past and could provide clues about how life originated on this planet. The conditions in these brine pools closely resemble those that may have existed on Earth billions of years ago, in the planet's deep oceans. 
Some scientists even suggest that life on Earth might have begun in environments similar to these brine pools, dark, oxygen-free, and isolated from the rest of the world. The implications of this discovery extend far beyond our own planet. Researchers believe that studying these brine pools could help us search for life on other planets. For instance, Mars is believed to have once had vast oceans, and it's possible that environments similar to Earth's brine pools could exist there as well. NASA has plans to send a special instrument, called HABIT, to Mars in a future mission. This instrument will study areas on the red planet that could mimic the conditions found in Earth's brine pools. By understanding how life can survive in such extreme conditions, we may be able to find evidence of life elsewhere in the universe. But the Red Sea has more secrets to reveal. In a five-month-long expedition called the Decade Expedition, launched by the National Center for Wildlife, scientists discovered a host of new and fascinating things. Over 10 blue holes were found, underwater sinkholes that contain entire ecosystems. These blue holes provide safe havens for dolphins to protect their young from predators. Researchers also discovered traces of great white sharks, deep-sea lanternfish that thrive in low oxygen conditions, and a new species of coral capable of surviving without oxygen. Despite these remarkable discoveries, we've only explored about 5% of the world's oceans. The ocean is divided into several distinct layers based on depth, and each layer reveals its own set of mysteries. The shallowest layer, called the epipelagic or sunlight zone, extends about 650 feet deep and is home to familiar creatures like dolphins and turtles. As we descend deeper into the mesopelagic or twilight zone, we encounter strange and solitary creatures like octopuses and sharks. Beyond that, at around 13,000 feet, we enter the midnight zone, where creatures like the blobfish and anglerfish roam in almost complete darkness. Even deeper lies the abyssal zone, stretching to about 20,000 feet, where small creatures like tube worms and shrimp thrive in an oxygen-deprived environment. Finally, we reach the Haddal Zone, the deepest and most remote part of the ocean. Named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld, this zone starts at around 20,000 feet and extends to over 36,000 feet, encompassing the infamous Mariana Trench. Only three people have ever explored this zone in person, making it one of the least explored places on the planet. Yet, even in this dark, high-pressure environment, life persists. Amphipods and snailfish thrive by feeding on dead material that sinks from above. One of the most surprising discoveries in these deep, oxygen-poor environments was the presence of high levels of oxygen in certain areas. At first, scientists thought their equipment was malfunctioning, but further testing revealed that small potato-sized rocks, called polymetallic nodules, were generating oxygen through a process known as electrolysis. These rocks act like batteries, creating tiny electric currents that split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen, producing what scientists now call dark oxygen. This oxygen is sustaining life in some of the most extreme environments on Earth, reshaping our understanding of where and how life can evolve. These discoveries have profound implications for the search for life beyond Earth. Planets and moons with low oxygen environments, such as Europa and Enceladus, the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn, could potentially host life forms similar to those found in Earth's deep oceans. As scientists continue to explore the uncharted depths of our oceans and the far reaches of our solar system, there is no doubt that even more astonishing discoveries lie ahead. We are only beginning to understand the complexities of life on Earth and the possibilities that exist beyond our planet. Stay tuned for more exciting discoveries as we continue to push the boundaries of exploration and uncover the mysteries of our world and the universe. If you found this journey into the unknown fascinating, don't forget to give the video a like and share it with your friends. For more captivating discoveries, make sure to click on the videos displayed on your screen and continue exploring the wonders of our